So, really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on this massive card, Hierophant Bio Titan. Yeah, uh, this card is 12 mana, so make sure you check that episode out at some point. But don't leave just yet, because on this episode, we've got a brand new commander, and uh, yeah, this commander is going to be really popular. But before we jump into that commander, make sure you blame Eddie in the comments below because Eddie gave a lot of recommendations on uh, this episode and it's been very helpful during spoiler season. And yeah, if I make any mistakes, it's always Eddie's fault, not mine. So blame Eddie in the comments below and now let's jump into it. The commander on uh, this episode is going to be Magnus the red and my goodness we have a heavy hitter here well okay not not really power wise i mean four is not bad but yeah four or five flying demon primark and, and uh i don't know if we've ever seen the creature type primark please someone in the comments below, below let me know if we have that costs three blue red and it has unearthly power instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature token you control my goodness is that powerful Cost reduction itself is just a very powerful thing. And when you can have a massive amount of cost reduction, that can help you cast, you know, big spells that kind of, you know, help you, you know, reduce cost even more. And we'll talk about plenty of those here in a bit. Yeah, this has a ton of potential. Really quick, let's move on though. Blade of Magnus. Whenever Magnus the Red deals con range to a player, create a 3 3 red spawn creature token. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, that's not going to be the main way that you are making a ton of tokens. Sure, that's not bad. I mean, a 4 or 5 flyer you can get through on, you know, a couple of opponents, most likely. Again, flying is a decent form of evasion. So, yeah, every single turn getting a 3 3, not bad at all. But um, you're going to be able to go a lot quicker than that with a lot of different effects and spells out there. And, okay, obviously, I should mention, sure, I mean, if you put double strike on this, awesome, I get two three threes each turn. Yeah, I mean, that's nice, but still, I mean, we're talking about other ways to make, well, I mean, essentially kind of doubling up your army every single turn, kind of. We'll talk about them, okay? I promise, I promise we'll get there. But, yeah, I mean, any kind of a commander that provides cost reduction, especially a massive amount of potential cost reduction, is going to be a very, very powerful commander. I mean, there's a reason why Mizzix of the Is Magnus was, you know, used to be. I mean, it's still a very powerful commander, but there's a lot of other powerful commanders now, but definitely kind of one of the, you know, as soon as it gets into play, you need to take it out kind of commanders because <laughs> it gets pretty ridiculous. And whereas Mizzix, you know, cares about, you know, you casting bigger and bigger spells, Magnus is like, uh, hey, all you need to do is just cast some spells to make a ton of tokens, which then lets you cast even more spells to make even more tokens. And then, uh, yeah, you basically can win very quickly with this kind of commander. I mean, you can go in a couple different directions with this deck, all kind of, you know, with the core of it being making a ton of creature tokens. You can definitely go Storm. That is definitely a direction. You can go Extra Turns. We'll talk about some different directions to take this. And yeah, I mean, at, at the base of it, though, you want to be able to cast spells that can make you a ton of tokens. And speaking of those cards and speaking of those spells, make sure you check out the link in the description below that's got the list of the cards I talked about on this episode. And if you are interested in this commander, yeah, I mean, I can... Okay, I'm not going to say guarantee you, but I can basically guarantee you this one's going to be very popular. So, uh, you know, some of the cards that work well with it very well might go up in price sooner rather than later because when a new exciting commander like this one is spoiled, even before the actual commander comes out, which I believe is going to be October 7th is when you know, the product is actually available... Uh, players ahead of time are going to be picking up cards that work well with it and might even build the entire deck around the commander before they even get it in their hands. So yeah, check out that link in the description below. And with all that said, let's jump into the cards. First up, token generators are going to have a field day in this deck with cards like Young Pyromancer, Murmuring Mystic, and Tolerant Sky Summoner, just to name a few. These creature token generators on creatures are great. Young Pyromancer says whenever you cast an Sorcery Spell, create a 1 1 red elemental creature token. Murmuring Mystic does the exact same thing, but it's going to make you a 1 1 with flying, and Tolerant's going to make you a 2 2 with flying. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, any of these in play are just going to be great for you. You're going to have a ton of instant sorceries in this deck. And now every single time you cast one, you get an extra creature token, which again is just basically, hey, an extra cost reduction for all of your instants and sorceries. And that can really build up throughout the game. 
especially again in certain builds where you're going to be casting a, a lot of instant sorceries on you know the exact same turn so you're just casting more and more spells to reduce the further spells you know that you're casting more and more and more and yeah things can get out of hand in absurd very quickly so these and i mean dika is probably another one i should have brought up too you know dika and then whatever that one insect one is uh from innistrad uh okay i'll be honest i gave up and looked it up dose of perfection that is another one there's a lot of ways to make a lot of creature tokens very very quickly and throughout the game in these colors pop it citrus another one look i mean just there's a ton okay and of course, outside of those creatures that make creature tokens, you've got some enchantments that can help you out as well. And some really effective ones are going to be cards like Meldrick Summonings and Shark Typhoon. And of course, you know, in comparison as well, they're just going to be harder to deal with in a lot of circumstances. Creatures are typically a lot easier to deal with. I mean, a Wrath of God is going to wipe the board, and those are a lot more typical. You know, wipe the board of all creatures versus these. These just stick around through that. And, you know, enchantments are probably one of the hardier things to deal with in Magic. Anyways, Melodric Summoning says, whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, create an XX colorless construct artifact creature token where X that spells mana value. And on top of that, pay three blue blue, exile it, return all instant sorcery cards from your grave to your hand, activate if you control six or more artifacts. Obviously, you can get to six artifacts pretty quickly if you're casting a good amount of instant sorceries, you know, on top of the other artifacts that you might already have out, like, you know, mana rocks. But yeah, with just this staying in play, this can provide you a lot of value, making you a ton of tokens, again, leading to more cost reduction to help you cast bigger and bigger spells. And we'll get to some of these here in a bit, but yeah, especially with X spells, this can make you absurdly large constructs. And speaking of absurdly large, how about Shark Typhoon? Another great enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, because you know, sharks have flying, right? <laughs> Where X that spells converted mana cost. So yeah, again, make more and more creatures to reduce the cost of your spells. And, and really, in all honesty, at a certain point, you can probably make a creature with either one of these that is going to be a one-shot KO on an opponent. Just, I mean, a 40-40 shark that is flying is definitely not out of the realm of possibilities for a deck like this. Because, yeah, this kind of a commander, the kind of commander that can have a mass amount of cost reduction, can get out of control in no time. Because, yeah, I mean, how about some X spells like, you know, Goblin Offensive, which has some of my favorite flavor text of all time because it literally just refers to the actual name of the card. Goblin Offensive. They certainly are. I, I love that. That's great. Anyways, Sorcery for X, 1, Red, Red. Put X, 1, 1, Red Goblin Creature Tokens onto the battlefield. So, yeah, I mean, this basically, again, with your commander, thanks to cost reduction, is just going to cost Red, Red because you can reduce the generic and the X to whatever you need it to be and cast this for a ton to basically, you know, essentially kind of like double up the number of tokens that you have, maybe even more so. And, and then, yeah, when you cast another token spell, like, you know, Temple of Vengeance, you can put even more into that X because of that cost reduction. So you're just basically, again, doubling up your army again and again and again with these spells. So, yeah, I mean, finding ways to just get these back in your hand, you know, maybe with some cards like call to mind or like missing retrieval that can bring you back an answer or sorcery you can just keep casting these and just keep making your army absurdly large so yeah temple of vengeance ain't another one tempting offer and i don't know if your opponents are going to be tempted by this they really shouldn't be but they might be <laughs> put x1 on elemental creature tokens with haste on the battlefield each opponent may put x1 on elemental creature tokens with haste on the battlefield for each player who does Put X, 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. So basically, you can put a mass amount of mana into this, again, obviously, because your commander has a mass amount of cost reduction for that X. And your opponents, well, they probably, again, shouldn't put any mana into it because they're just going to be giving you even more tokens, which, again, helps with your cost reduction. So if your opponents are smart, they probably won't do anything with it. But still, I mean, for you, it's basically, you know, a one mana way to make a ton of tokens. Even a card like Firecat Blitz can be very impactful in this deck as well. Put X1 red cat creature tokens with haste into play. Remove them from the game at the end of the turn. So yeah, exile them. But still, I mean, just being able to just pay, you know, two mana essentially, make a ton of hasty cats that can, you know, attack your opponents and take out probably a player. Kind of like a giant fireball essentially that needs to like be blocked in some ways. Uh, but, but also, again, it does contribute to your cost reduction for other spells, at least for that turn. And yeah, for two mana, that can be a massive upside play. Moving on, we also have some cards that can help you out in other ways while also, you know, making you a ton of tokens as well, like Stolen by the Fae. 
Return to our creature converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature tokens with flying. So yeah, basically bounce any of your opponent's creatures. Whatever their biggest creature is going to be, you're probably going to have you know, enough cost reduction for that X to ensure that you can actually bounce that one and then make that many fairies that also, again, help you reduce the cost for your other spells. Or how about release the gremlins? I mean, at a certain point, this is just a one-sided artifact board wipe. XX and a red, destroy X target artifacts, create X22 red gremlin creature tokens. Yeah, again, with the cost reduction, the, the gross amount of cost reduction that you can have with this commander, basically, both those Xs are going to be paid for. You can just take out all of your opponent's artifacts, all their mana rocks, everything they have when it comes to artifacts. And, you know, to replace that, you get a ton of 2-2 two -two red gremlin creature tokens, which, again, reduce the cost of your next spells even further. So it's a massive hit to your opponents and a massive increase to your value. Speaking of value, how about Garrett's Belligerence, which at a certain point can just be a one-sided board wipe for your opponent's creatures that can also benefit you too. It's going to deal X damage divided you choose among any number of target creatures. Whenever a creature dealt damage this way dies this turn, populate. And again, populating means that you get a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. So again, as you're seeing with all these, you know, X spells essentially that can make a lot of tokens, we, we just keep casting more and more of those. We just keep making a ton of creatures for our army. And then all of a sudden we can put whatever amount of mana we need into that X. I mean, the amount of mana essentially, you know, just for, you know, our opponent's toughness for all their creatures, we can probably get into that Cheers Belligerence, take out all their creatures, populate a lot and again whatever our best creature token is just get copies of that for days next up though a card that can help us out in a different kind of way but in a similar way too occult epiphany costs x and a blue so again just basically a blue for this commander draw x cards this card x cards create a 1-1 white spear creature token with flying for each card type among cards discard this way so obviously this one does have a limit on the number of creature tokens it's going to make you it's based on the number of you know different kinds of cards you discarded but still being able to just basically you know have a massive amount of card selection by drawing a ton of cards discarding a ton of cards just a massive amount of looting can really get you set up for that turn and can really help you go off while again, also just, you know, making some tokens on the side, even if this just makes you, you know, three, four tokens, that's still going to be well worth it. Next up, though, we've got Drown in Dreams, which is a crazy good card in this deck. X2 and a blue. Choose one. If you control a commander, you cast a spell, you may choose both. And, and yeah, when we're casting this, we're probably going to have our commander in play. Target player draws X cards and or target player mills twice X cards. So, again, I mean, we can easily put a ton of mana into that once we're set up properly, draw an absurd amount of cards. I mean, again, 40 cards or so is definitely not out of the question. And then, of course, we can just mill a player out at the exact same time. So, yeah, this can be a, hey, go get every single card I need to win. And also, while I'm at it, take a player out while I'm just doing this. But also, make sure you're considering cards that aren't just, you know, straight up card advantage, but, you know, even temporary card advantage like Commute with Lava, X Red Red, Exile the top X card of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. So this basically can store up a ton of cards for us that we can cast on our next turn. And again, with all the cost reduction we have, we can actually just cast a ton, an absurd amount of cards on our turn. We're talking about some ways to, I mean, not go infinite, maybe go infinite, but also just ways... That can ensure that we are being able to cast basically whatever we need. Next up though, how about a flexible card like Expansion Explosion? This one can really help us out in a lot of situations. Expansion says copy target instant resources spell with converted mana cost four or less. Choose an argument for the copy. So if we really need to copy something, we can. But Explosion is incredible. X, blue, blue, red, red. It's going to deal X damage to any target and target player draws X cards. So again, like Drown in Dreams, this can be both a way to draw an absurd amount of cards and also a way to finish another player off. And actually, sometimes both. Sometimes we can actually just, you know, use both of these ends, you know, making a player draw X cards and dealing X damage to a player to actually take both of them out. I mean, again, if X equals, you know, amount that is going to mill a player out, great. And, and, and also, you know, obviously an amount to, you know, ping a player down to zero. So yeah, cards like these have a lot of potential in a deck like this. Speaking of potential, yeah, I mean, if you are going kind of in a storm direction or, or even, you know, leaning harder into a storm direction, cards like Bergy and Stormkill Artist can be incredible in this deck. And I, I will mention, there are certain playgroups out there that are not okay with storm decks because they do, you know, kind of monopolize a turn and, you know, take 20 minutes on a turn. So make sure you check with your playgroup first before really leaning heavy into a storm direction. Thank you. 
Anyways, Bergy, whenever you cast a spell, add red. Until end of turn, you don't lose its mana as steps and phases end. So with every single spell that you're casting, again, you basically just get a single red mana back, which is great. I mean, and again, for those spells that, you know, have an X in their cost, like, you know, getting that temp spell, that's basically a free spell now. Because again, you can just utilize your commander's cost reduction to pay for that X. You pay a single red mana to cast it, and you get that mana back thanks to Bergy. So yeah, this can definitely help you storm all. Speaking of which, Storm Kill an Artist, it's gonna get plus one with zero for each artifact you control that really didn't need to be on this card, but <laughs> it is. Anyways, whenever you cast or copy an or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. So obviously, yeah, kind of like Bergy, this basically just gives you mana back when you're casting instant sorcery spells. You can save up those treasures for when you need them, and, and yeah, you can do some pretty ridiculous things with each of these. And of course, you know, any kind of a magecraft creature is going to want to be considered for this deck. I mean, Archmage Emeritus. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. You're going to be casting a ton of instant sorceries, so draw a lot of cards with this throughout the game. And yeah, if you are leaning heavily into that storm direction, I mean, a card like Empty the Warrens is a great storm, you know, card for this deck, especially for this deck. Sorcery for three and red. Again, for this deck, you're just going to basically pay, what, a single red mana for this? And it's got storm so you get to copy it for every spell you cast before this turn and uh create two one red goblin creature tokens is what it's going to do for each and every single one of those copies so this can make you an absurd amount of creature tokens for again just one mana and yeah i mean if you are leaning into you know a storm build or again a extra turns build or a storm extra turns build gross i mean again ask your play group first especially the extra turns builds too next to fate take next turn of this one if it been a grave from anywhere reveal it and shuffle into the owner's library instead um, yeah, extra turn spells can be brutal in decks like these because you can cast them again very efficiently next to fate. Usually it costs seven mana, but this commander, the vast majority of the time, is just going to cost two for an extra turn. So yeah, you basically can just keep, you know, getting extra turn after extra turn after extra turn. And with this one, you can even get it back because it gets shoveled in your library. So yeah, you can definitely do some very gross things with this commander. And again, you can take it in a good amount of directions. And if you are taking it in again, a direction that might monopolize the time of the table or an oppressive direction, check with your playgroup first. One final thing I do want to bring up that Eddie brought up, and yeah, I mean, extra copies of this commander. Gross. Arenicus's Vile Duplication. Create token that's a copy to our creature control, except the token has flying. It isn't legendary if the creature is legendary. Just basically, yeah, get an extra copy of your commander for a single mana. Again, normally it costs three and a blue. That cost reduction is obviously going to cover that, though. So, yeah, just a blue mana, extra copy of your commander to double up your cost reduction. Gross. And, yeah, of course, I mean, any other ways to get extra copies of your commander? I mean, Spark Double or Helm of the Host. I mean, Helm of the Host, at the beginning of combat in your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. If the equipped creature is legendary, token gains haste. The more and more copies you get, the grosser this all gets. You really probably only need, like, you know, one token copy of your commander to really do some pretty absurd things. And you don't even need a token copy at a certain point. But, yeah, I mean, Ereticus's Vile Duplication itself is going to be a massive, essentially, one-mana spell for you that is just going to just completely take over the game. But as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Magnus the Red. Yeah, I mean, I said it before, I'll say it again. And I mean, it was the episode title, right? Uh, this is gonna be a popular commander. I can pretty much guarantee that, I mean, at this point, seeing all the commanders so far, it might be the most popular one out of all of these commanders. Though, I mean, obviously there's some other really heavy hitters out there that are definitely going to see a ton of play. But players tend to really like, again, creature tokens, massive spells, and cost reduction. And this is like, hey, do you like all those things? Great. It's all in one commander that can do some incredibly gross and powerful things. So yeah, again, if you are interested in this commander and you're excited about it, like many other players I'm sure are make sure you check out that link in the description below because again when new exciting commanders like this one come out even though again this one's not coming out i mean until october 7th i think is when the actual product is going to be available it definitely has the potential to raise the prices of cards that work well with it because well a lot of players are going to want cards that work well with this commander so yeah make sure you check out that link in the description below and of course make sure you stay tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers coming out and with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. 
If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.